welcome to my channel. I'm Elise and I make these videos as love letters to myself and I consider this channel sharing the pages with you. Other than cute dogs, you will find creative writing and other bookish content along with fitness and personal development videos. This week I turned 28 years old. I'm going to take you through an autumnal birthday week. We're going to do some bookstore exploring planned for my Twilight themed birthday party and we're going to talk a lot about how I feel about what I've learned in my 27th year. Let's get into it! <laughs> bookstore tour. I'll be officially 28 in about two hours, but I would truly be remiss to celebrate a day that marks the beginning of my life when it's being estimated that 150 children are being born in Gaza every day. C-sections are being performed by the light of cell phones without access to soap for the doctors to wash their hands without water and food for the new moms. There's a limited amount that I can do, but I can talk about it and I can give my money to the right organizations. So much of the last year, I have realized that I'm tired of being so burnt out and scared to look unflinchingly at all of the systems of oppression. Hiding isn't going to fix them or make my heart less heavy knowing that they're going on in the world. And I can't look away from this. So if you're watching this, you're looking too. So. There will be links below to donate to relief funds for civilians. If you are about that life and you actually want to support the dismantling of Israel, there's links for books and articles that I found helpful as I try to learn more about this. I want to learn more. I must learn more because what is the purpose of this 28th year in front of me if I'm not going to use it to advocate for justice? That's just not who I am. When I look at my birth chart, when I look at my track record of my adulthood, I can't be too tired or too sad or too overwhelmed to deal with this. So just needed to get that disclaimer out of the way. We're going to get on the road and we're going to try to find some joy today. I'm going to take my happy pills. I've been procrastinating. I think I'm going to spend the moment of my solar return at home because I just love being here. Our home is really a safe space. I feel so comfortable here and when I'm not here, I'm counting down the hours till I can go back. So I'm going to spend it here and then we're going to go to a couple different bookstores. One of them is my favorite to just browse around. One of them is new that I haven't been to yet and I want to patronize an independent bookstore. Then I might also hit up a half price books for a couple of reads that I've read already but I want a copy. And then take Artie for a nice little hike, get cozy and read until it's time for us to go out for my birthday dinners. I've been really leaning into just like things that I really used to enjoy and bring them back into my life. I got back into reading during COVID. I've been like wanting to learn the violin again, which I used to play as a kid. Also wanting to learn how to skateboard. Like, I don't know where that came from, but I started wanting to learn how to skateboard a couple years ago. And one of our friends got me a skateboard as a wedding present. Oh, that looks cute. Not too much, not too much. You're right. still half dressed. I'm doing my makeup. Okay. And then everybody was digging it up about her. And Rare Beauty's CEO is a Zionist <laughs> who follows the IDF and stuff. Not really. I'm low key. I don't know why I thought she was the CEO. She's the founder, but she's not making the formulas and stuff. I know that. But. She definitely is not in the lab. You see her with the Bunsen burner, like <laughs> with the. Uh... Stop two at the first place that I went to. I only got two books because I wanted to leave some room in the budget for the next places we would go. The first book that I got is The Last Graduate by Naomi Novik, which is part of the Deadly Education series. I don't actually know what the whole series itself is called. I really liked the first book, so I grabbed that. I also got House of the Spirits by Isabel Allende. I just read A Long Petal of the Sea, and it was a beautiful story about 
resilience and pushing back against oppressive regimes during Francoist Spain in World War II. It was just a really beautiful story and I love her writing. This is supposed to be one of her like creme de la creme books so I'm really looking forward to that. This is the second independent bookstore that I'm going to today. It looks really promising on the inside so I'll try to get some b-roll but it's been a really beautiful day and I'm having a really nice time. second bookstore was awesome. I loved it. I got to talk with the owner a little bit and he was super cool. The first one and the one I'm probably the most excited about is this autobiography of Ansel Adams. I love photography. My dad has this exact book. I loved looking through it growing up and it's one of the things that drew me to photography. So it's just really cool to see that and it was only $15. I thought it could be like a nice coffee table book. The second book that I got is The Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty. I love the City of Brass series. I listened to the second book on audio and I just never ended up buying it. And I got it for $7, like this perfect condition hardback. I'm so happy that I found this. We are back from our bookish adventure and I thought I'd share the last few books that I picked up. I found everything that I was looking for and so we'll start off with this copy of A Discovery of Witches. The second bookstore that I went to only had the set and I just don't know if I'm going to like it enough to buy all three. I decided to read that. I need something to fill my fourth wing hole which I really really liked. The protagonist was kind of annoying, but the story I really enjoyed. I also had wanted something a little spooky and dark academia. This one is about a girl who lives as a ward of this wealthy gentry, finds a book, and then basically learns that she can escape from her life into the story. And this kind of reminds me of The Midnight Library by Matt Haig, and I really liked that story. I'm sure this one will be very different, but I really liked the concept of escaping into an actual physical book. The last work of fiction that I picked up is Daughter of the Black Lake, because a lot of the reviews said that it's really clear how much research the author Kathy, B Kathy Buchanan does. I want to be a very critical and thorough author, but also the story itself just sounds really interesting. It follows a mother-daughter relationship, which is like one of my favorite plot lines in a, a fiction story. The next book that I picked up is also kind of related to research African myths and tales. There's stories of wit and wisdom. There's stories of creation, of death, of afterlife. And then the very last book I picked up was really just kind of a fun one. Write Your Own Horoscope by Jane Struthers. With astrology books, I feel like a lot of them are kind of like coffee table books where you flip through and there's like five pages of information for every sun sign and then there's like little like journaling prompts and that's it. And I think that is great, but I'm a little bit more advanced in what I know about astrology. So if I'm buying a book, I want it to have comprehensive information. I also got two bookmarks because I'm always running out of bookmarks. I will dog ear the pages. I know that's a fatal sin for some. Put that in Diana's head and I'm gonna get cozy and read. husband off at the airport for a weekend trip. He's going on at 4 a.m. and I overslept and so the whole morning's gone. It's almost noon. I have to take my dog to the groomer at 1 30 so I'm gonna maximize the most of what's left of the morning early afternoon 
and take her on a hike. And then we're gonna dive into the weekend. off at the groomers so I have a few hours at home. I want to sit down and read some more of The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I can feel it picking up and I'm just really enjoying reading it. so good. We've got some fall ambience going. I'm just gonna keep reading. I'm so cozy. I'm so happy. I have just been having the most laid back day. I've read like a hundred pages of the secret history. FaceTimed with Keegan a little bit. It was good to see him. I'm going to meet up with a couple of my girlfriends just for some drinks tonight to celebrate my birthday. So just letting Artie out and playing with her for a little bit. And then we're gonna get on the road. All dressed and ready for dinner and drinks. Simple hoops, got a little bit of perfume on and we're ready to go. And just like that, our long weekend has come to an end. I just got out of bed as it is probably abundantly clear. Around one, I have to go pick up literature and materials because I'm volunteering for someone who's running for judge on election day at one of the polling locations. I also need to make a return. Those are like the main errands I have to do other than just doing like the normal grocery run today. Oh my God, and Keegan's birthday gift for me came in the mail yesterday. I'm obsessed. I don't own any like luxury brand stuff. He got me these coach platform loafers. This is exactly what I've, I've literally been hunting for some shoes like this for a minute and he's been watching me hunt and he got them for me. I'm so happy. huge fan of this time of year but they might have been onto something with this whole hot cup of coffee on a crisp morning type beat like this kind of eats it's like steaming the birds are chirping peak fall colors i get it but only in this very specific situation i'm just really enjoying this weekend and i want to say if you are like somebody who hoards your pto use that you know, you can't take it with you. Literally, you cannot take it with you. My mom used to do this all the time when we were younger. She would just take off a day. And I used to not understand it because I was like, you're just at home. And now I'm like, oh, I get it. The last few days have just been the reset that I needed. Something I'm always really scared about is that when I'm alone too long, I will get depressed. Like, I definitely am somebody who enjoys socializing. I enjoy being in big groups. I definitely recharge alone. But at the same time, if I'm alone for too long, I can easily fall into like spells of not following routines, not following any disciplinary habits that I have. And falling out of step with my routines is like step one to falling into a depressive episode. <laughs> She's an athlete. On the weekends, I actually really do rely on Keegan to help us maintain our schedules, maintain our routines. And so when he's gone, it's kind of like when, when the cat's away, the mouse will rot. All that to say, I'm feeling motivated. I'm feeling proud of myself for keeping with my routines throughout the weekend. And I'm also thankful for this time that I've just had to myself. I don't ever just have time to myself. When I'm at work and I'm thinking, oh, what would I be doing today? Like, what would I be 
getting into if I didn't have to be in the office and I got to do that and so when I go to work this week I don't think I'm gonna be feeling as much of that oh I wish I could be at home doing fill in the blank anyways I'm going to journal a little bit and then we're going to go to the store I feel like I'm making such good time this afternoon. I already picked up my stuff for election day, made this Amazon return at Whole Foods, and now I'm going to run into our TJ Maxx because I need matches and I need to go to GNC and get pre-workout. I got to TJ Maxx and I did I'm not joking, you four loops around the parking lot and couldn't find a spot. And the thought of waiting in lines that mirrored that parking lot made me want to cry. So we're not going to TJ Maxx. I wanted to show you guys a little plant update. This is a citrus plant that we got last summer. And the fruit is starting to ripen in a couple different spots. And so I'm really hoping that this plant thrives this winter. Last winter, it just got a little too dry. So I feel ready to combat it this time around. Since we have a couple leftover meals this week, we actually didn't need too much at the grocery store, which I was very thankful for. Cheers to Monday. This is the first full week of me being 28 years old and I'm gonna stick to the goals that I have for myself. What I noticed was that I had time set aside in my mornings for my physical health, but not my mental health. So I really didn't add that much to my already existing routine because I didn't want to overwhelm myself. Making sure that I've checked in with myself for the day, that I've had time to rest in silence and figure out what my priorities for the day are and also honoring my home by making sure that it's tidy before i leave for the day i really want to be intentional about it this week because i don't know i feel motivated by this new beginning so i'm gonna just try to lean into that as much as i can so i packed my own lunch today and we're just gonna have some leftover soup as the main, I packed some Dots pretzels, Arctic White Alani, and then for a snack in case I get hungry, I've got some cranberry almond chicken salad and carrots to snack on. I know what you're thinking. Why are you outside in the middle of the night? It's almost six in the morning. This morning, I got everything prepped and ready for breakfast and coffee because when I get back, we're gonna go vote. I'm volunteering at a voting location. So when I inevitably have to gaslight myself into wanting to go do that after a long day of work, my fun little treat is going to pick up Iron Flame, which I know, I know has mixed reviews, but I think it's fun. Okay, let me live. It's been a crazy day. Trying to settle a case, trying to prep for a trial, trying to ignore the constant global horrors beyond comprehension, listening to Supreme Court oral arguments. So I'm gonna stop multitasking for just a minute and eat my lunch. I haven't really caught up with you in a couple of days because it has been a crazy freaking week. Every week I try my best to prepare for what's gonna happen and for what I've got going on. And some weeks just catch you by surprise no matter how much you plan. Tuesday ended up being a wonderful day. It was so fun and it was really empowering to just be out at the voting polls and talking to voters, talking to city councilors, talking to candidates, talking to other people who were volunteering. It was just really special and really kind of put the fire back in my belly. 
Um, Ohio did a great job. We protected a person's right to make reproductive medical choices for themselves. And marijuana was also legalized, which I was a little bit less like confident about that one. I got Iron Flame. It has the black sprayed edges. I stayed up way too late last night reading. We have got a pretty busy day ahead of us. Like I told you guys, I'm having a Twilight themed birthday party tonight and I'm just hosting a couple girlfriends over and I have some games and fun drinks and stuff like that that we're gonna do. Keegan is out at work studying today and so he's gonna pick up some stuff on his way home as well. So I asked everybody to come in costume. I'm not really expecting a ton because like I personally wouldn't do that much if somebody else asked me to do this. But I thought that everybody could come dressed as their favorite reference from Twilight. Everyone's gonna be split into one of two teams, Edward or Team Jacob. I have a couple of games to help people win points and whichever team gets the most points at the end of the night wins a prize, which is gonna be like a golden onion. Then we're gonna do a Family Feud style trivia. And then we're going to be playing the Twilight drinking game that I came up with while we watch Eclipse because I feel like that's the most aggressive love triangle of all the movies. We're going to have an intermission during our watch part to have a debate. Team Edward versus Team Jacob will try to convince Keegan <laughs> who Bella should end up with. And I also have two fun drinks. One is the gin of a killer, but it's this um, indigo colored gin. When it's mixed with like a citrus, it turns like a very sunset color between purple and pink. And I just thought that would be fun because I have some edible glitter that I think would look really cool in that. And we're also going to have mulled wine, which I'm calling the forbidden fruit mulled wine. For our entree, we are having mushroom ravioli. <laughs> That's what Edward and Bella had on their first date in Twilight for snacks. And then I have a for the lions and for the lambs charcuterie board. This was actually Keegan's idea because a couple of our friends are vegetarian. I used forever young adult as most of my questions and then I came up with some other questions on my own because I have in the instructions that I'm gonna read to everyone please know that some of the correct answers are based on my personal opinion <laughs> for example what part of Jasper's human backstory was completely unnecessary and the correct answer is being a confederate soldier why the did you put that in the book I'm really just more of a homebody so I didn't really want to like be bar hopping or anything like that let's get into it I'm making our grocery list and watching the season six finale of Game of Thrones. I have had Light of the Seven by Raman Jawadi like stuck in my head for the last four days. So I wanted to rewatch that scene. If you know, you know, but now I'm just watching it because it's weirdly a comfort show for me. I got everything I needed and now it's time for us to clean the house and decorate. I think we have plenty of food though. Like every time I take that mulled wine, people are like, that got me f***ed up. I drug it <laughs> off the mulled wine. <laughs> she was slamming cup after cup and I was like, girl, you gotta slow down. to the other side of town to get a really good brunch. My sister stayed the night and we've just been hanging out all morning and it's been really cozy and fun. Last night was such a good time. It's just been such a special weekend. Hello from much later. I just wanted to close out this vlog since I never did. I had an incredible birthday. It was so much fun and I'm glad that I pushed through my anxiety of hosting and I'm really appreciative to my husband for not letting me be a coward. It was a recharge that I needed and that I felt very rested from for a long time after that. I'm going to have a Thanksgiving vlog up where we put up the Christmas decorations that you see in the background and I've got some creative writing content I'm looking forward to making in the next couple of weeks over the holidays. So until then, thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next time.